video that's not sponsored by nerds. <laughs> oh, it's for. Oh, is it open? Oh, man, they've <laughs> gone everywhere. Questions oh, yeah. for Will. Yep. Who's Will? What's the first sign you're not eating enough, getting too lean? I know Alex suffered with this from last year, and I know a couple of others who had similar problems. Um, there'll be a case of losing weight and losing power at the same time. Um, also, incidents of your sleep getting worse as it progresses, which means you're not able to recover enough. This is a good one. MK Tech asks, what do you eat when you're not riding constantly? So sick, injured, watching cat videos. But whenever I'm not training, I pack on tons of weight because my mind and body is so used to stuff on my face with wild abandon. It's, it's about the type of food that he's eating that fills him up. So I had this for a while and we solved it with things like peppers. Yep. Peppers yeah. are really good for it. So he needs to switch up his food choices. So he's, uh, he's fueling for uh, a performance-based um, activity. He's not doing that activity anymore, so he needs to switch up um, the same size of like feeling of fulfillness um, from his food. So loads of veg, loads of fibrous foods. So um, loads high of, volume, low calorie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like loads of lentils and beans and pulses, things like this. Loads of vegetables, trays of roast bake, um, roast veg is going to be really ideal for that. So when when we I've done really low days, Will basically tells me just to go to the shop and buy tons of veg. Yeah, and I do roasted veg. You've seen me just eat. Again, it's, it's low fat stuff as well yeah. because yeah. fat is such a high calorie, dense, high calorie yeah, yeah, exactly. sort of fuel source. Um, I'd also say that he should maybe, if he doesn't track his food for a little while and just see, because if he's gaining weight, he's obviously eating too many calories. Mm. So he needs to reduce his calorie intake, which he'll do by getting fuller on more vegetables, but. If he tracks it for, let's say, three weeks a month, he'll see how many calories he's having and then just reduce it. If he stops gaining weight, he needs to know he's in maintenance. Nice. Yeah. Couscous, yay or nay when you're trying to lose weight but love eating? Uh, yeah, you can always have all foods when you're dieting. Uh, you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose the weight. So couscous is a yes. No food in itself will get you fat. What's the best way to fuel for a hard effort one day endurance event? I imagine something like Ride London. Hard effort day. one day endurance event. And so I imagine it's going to be like a how know, the fuel for longest it? Ironman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They need to carb load the day before, uh, which would be 10 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate. Uh, I'd probably drop back the fat, drop back the protein because they're already going to be in a calorie surplus. They don't need the protein to recover as much as long as they're getting about 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. Fat, you can drop right back. They don't need it. Um, and then 10 grams will be sufficient to saturate all muscle glycogen. And then before the race, they'll want between 1.2 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate bef two to four hours before the race. And that will saturate liver glycogen stores. And then he'll be ready to race. What's the best nutrition for gravel racing? Rocky road. <laughs> <laughs> How good are nitrates for endurance? Is there anything better? Does it matter where the nitrates are sourced? Beets versus bacon. So beetroot is a very popular performance enhancing uh, food yeah. or drink that you can have before an event yeah. because it contains nitrates. Why do nitrates make you uh, perform better? So nitrates get converted into nitric oxide within the body and that allows your blood vessels to dilate or vasodilate to expand and allows you to get more blood flow, blood flow through to the muscle, mm -hmm. um, which in turn allows you to get more oxygen and more nutrients to the muscle. Um, as for effectiveness, it seems to be on like a graded scale with pro or higher level athletes getting least effectiveness from it and amateur getting the most. Um, typically, you should load it for about four days beforehand at 140 mils per day um, every day in the lead up to an event. Um, and then on the day of the event, about two hours beforehand. Would I say, I would probably say you should get everything else right. I'd say if you take nitrates, but you haven't got sufficient carbohydrate or energy stores, it, it's pointless. So get everything else right and then take nitrates on top, you'll probably see a performance improvement. So that 140 mil is based on a concentrated... Yeah, that's surgery. a concentrated shot. Yeah, so you could, there's, um, they're readily available in most um, health shops, uh, like beat it shots. It's typically the one you can get. Each one will have about 400 milligrams of nitrate in it, I believe. Better off doing that than having a whole carton of beetroot juice? Yes, a carton of beet. you'd need a litre and a half of beetroot juice to get the same amount as a concentrated shot. That's a lot of beetroot juice. Yeah. That's a lot of... It doesn't taste nice. But I really like beetroots, so... Yeah. It'd be poo in purple, though. Yeah, it's piss shocking. Purple as well. And piss in purple. The, the piss one is scary sometimes yeah. if you forget you've oh had beetroot. Gosh, and you're like, whoa! <laughs> Can you write me a proper personalised nutrition plan? Is that a service you offer? It is. You can go to willgerling.com. Link down below. Yeah. Intermittent fasting for weight loss. 
thoughts? Intermittent fasting is a protocol, not an actual diet or way um, or the food you're having. So you can do intermittent fasting and still gain weight if you're in a calorie surplus. So in that point of view, it, it in itself will not make you lose weight or body fat. And does it fit your lifestyle would be my first and biggest question. If you're training early mornings before work, I'd say no, because you need to be fasted and then have your, well, you need to change your feeding zone because it's going to be 16 hours fasting, eight hours feeding. So you either train in the morning with food and then have eight, eight hours of eating up to like what, 4 p.m. and then not be able to have any dinner, which will be really antisocial, or you can't train in the morning and you'd have to train in the evening. So it's making sure your lifestyle fits your feeding times and zones. Um, and then obviously if you still want to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. As someone who doesn't eat a lot, can you name a good pre and post ride food mm. that will help fuel and aid recovery? Um, does he mean not liquids or not shake, just not, sh like not shakes? shakes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it depends how much time he has beforehand. Ideally, in an ideal world, you have something that's low GI carbohydrates, like this glycemic index, two to four hours beforehand. Then something high GI um, and low fiber about 20 minutes before. If they're training in the morning, obviously just do the 20 minutes before. Then fueling during, depends on the length of the session. If it's under 90 minutes, nothing. If it's over, um, maybe start looking at between 20 and 60 grams an hour. And then afterwards, for rapid recovery, you're looking at 0 0.3 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein with 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrate. So you'd be looking at something like um, white rice mixed with maybe, or couscous actually mixed with raisins um, to give like a glucose fructose mix, like a Moroccan couscous and then to have that with some chickpeas and legumes or something like that to give a complete carbohydrate source. You can alternatively just have one protein source for um, vegans, something like, let's say chickpeas, and have that with an essential amino acid supplement, um, which like raw sport do. You said if your training session is less than 90 minutes, then don't fuel at all. Yeah. On the ride. On the ride, yeah. What if you were racing? Uh, because I don't think I could get away in, without having a gel in an hour-long crit. In a, a one-hour sub effort like a crit, uh, carbohydrates won't improve performance. But there have been some uh, studies showing that mouth rinsing can help uh, improve performance. Is it like a placebo effect? No, you have oral cavity sensors in your mouth which receive that you're taking carbohydrate in and essentially trick the body into thinking that you are having it. Taking on a single gel would be fine, but I don't think you need anything more than that. A Hillingdon is probably just over an hour long. Yeah. By the end of that crit, if I hadn't had a gel, I would be on the verge of a bonk. Yeah. yeah. So definitely we mentioned earlier that if the intensity is so high that it, you can run out of stores with it um, in an hour. Yeah. So if it is just over an hour, it's definitely possible. So I'd say have, make sure you have enough carbohydrate two hours before, something 20 minutes, 20 minutes or less before, um, with probably some water to make sure you're hydrated. And then you can have maybe one bit of carbohydrate during. As for caffeine, you want it an hour beforehand and you want between three and six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. One pro plus per 10 kilograms of body weight. Yeah. Is it? It's 50 milligrams of caffeine per one pro plus or 74, 75 kilos or 74 is to say 75. So you want about what, that's uh, 225 milligrams of caffeine um, an hour beforehand minimum to get performance improvement from caffeine. Four or five pro plus. So for a big rider like George, it is seven or eight pro plus. Anything else? No, that's the end of the questions. Well, I'm going to so have my many. last ball Thank then. You. <laughs> Thank you. This is weird. <laughs> Why are we shaking hands? I don't know. You just put it out. I don't know.